the young people like to popularly, um, colloquially on social media say, did he lie though? Did he lie though? Is what they like to say. But we'll find out today. Did he lie though? That's uh, Coach Hugo Bruce of the South African national team speaking about Sundowns' is dominant in our league and their lack of competition from teams in the DSTV Premiership. He goes on to pick out particularly Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs saying he wishes that they get back to the strength they once were in so that Sundowns has bigger competition, better competition. This will enable South African teams to compete better in the Champions League, the Confederations League, basically the Continental Championships. Welcome to it. Hey, come on, Andy Gangube. This is Sports That Amplified with Andy the Mighty Metro FM. Thank you so much to Matt Al and the team. She held it down this entire week. And uh, I can tell you now that when they say Metro FM is the mecca of talent, it was showcased this week. Brilliant. Can catch her again next week between three and six. And that entire team that comprises of uh, Pretty P, uh, producer of the show. You've got uh, Super Dave. Uh, you've got Mr. Squat himself. Uh, you saw Moreno with the squats, right? And of course, Umam Jali. They do it again between three and six the entire of next week. Today, though, it's a Podcast Friday. The guys are here. Mark, I need to take a breather before I say so him. Mark Haskins is with us, and I probably said it wrong, but hey, it's all good. Did I say it right? He gave me a car, I said it right. Um, Kanza is with us as well, of course. We've got Biso with us as well. Some of the topics that we're going to be speaking about include Kaiser Chiefs goalkeeping department. We'll get into that. Baraka appointing Dan Dance Malisela. Nothing wrong with that, but what of the expectations of the delivery of Dan Dance Malisela? We'll get into that as well. And then Hugo Bruce, speaking on Sundowns' dominance, we'll get into that before we start previewing the big game, the MTNA final, Orlando Pirates versus Mamelodi Sundowns at Moses Mapita Stadium, kicking off at 6 o'clock this weekend. Tomorrow is a big one. It's 12 after the hour 6. Take a break. When we come back, the guys are in the studio. Fame, it's your favorite show of the week. It's Podcast Friday. <laughs> The guys are here. The lineup has been drawn. Uh, I've got uh, playing left backs, Piam Konza. He is a former Final Final Defender and Kaiser Chiefs captain, uh, part of the super team in 2005 that set 31 games unbeaten run. He's in the studio with us, uh, Dr. Mnandi. He is also the CEO of MD Lape in Mnandi Academy. Which are more in Mnandi Academy. So if you've got young ones that are looking to get the best way to go on, uh, the Mnandi Academy yeah. with Dr. Mnandi is uh, there based in? Pulukwan. Based in? Where in Pulukwan? I'm going to ask you, man, I'm going to ask you, man, I'm going to ask you, man, I'm going to ask uh, we don't have a venue yet. We're still trying to find a venue, but outside the stadium, the main, the new stadium, yeah. 2010, just outside Nama Crowns, La Pasia Aina Lap. Oh, so just outside the, 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 the Mukaro Stadium. Yeah. Mukaro Stadium there. And how do people get a hold of you again if they want to bring their young ones? I'm always getting people the saying, website. How do I get website. It? I was on Gena website. What's the website? It's www.mnandiacademy.co.za. Mnandi Academy CEO, MD, trainer, coach is in the building as well. Go to the website and see how you can get your young ones there. Also, he's a part of this show. Um, he's a social curator and social media manager. Biso Snaps is with us. Biso. Thank you so much for the opportunity once again. My eyes good to be here. Um, good evening to the fellow panelists, the listeners, and hey, welcome to the number one. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> the number one sports show in Mzansi. I appreciate you. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, every single week moving forward, if it's a Friday, you'll be hearing the voice of uh, former Cosmos Vits and Swallows midfielder. The list not quite as long as what Dr. Mnandi's oh, list Mara is. <laughs> but uh, Mark Haskins is going to be with us as well. Mbizu yeah. Portris. Yeah. Uh, Mark, thanks so much for joining us. And welcome. It's and my absolute pleasure. And thanks for having me once again. And good evening to the listeners. Looking forward well, to it. Well, not once again. Show. This is it. You're part of this team. <laughs> yeah. Fridays, you yeah. are here. Yeah. <laughs> Fridays, you are here. But Mark, that's not all you do. Because I've seen the amazing work you do once again. Um, what we like to do in this show is give people an opportunity and grow South African football. You part, play a huge part of that uh, with uh, Centre Circle Consulting. Yeah, obviously it's a consultancy that uh, represents footballers and manages footballers and helps them in their careers. And so I'm head of South Africa along with uh, my colleague Ricardo Katza. We work together to just try and, uh, you know, give the players the best service possible. So you manage players, you take care of players in South Africa and give players an opportunity to perhaps even go overseas because the agency is, you know, touches everywhere. It is a global agency, obviously headed by Rob Moore and his son Matthew Moore. Um, and we're just the South African representatives of the company. Well, there you go, guys. You can have your child uh, uh, go to Nandi Academy when they're ready, sign with uh, Mark, <laughs> and then Biso can take care yeah. of their social media. <laughs> ah, it's all encompassing. Nah. Hey, gents, let's get straight into it. Thank you. There's a stat that came out, and 
I'm not one for stats, but I do understand stats role yeah. in football because what else is a measure of what you're doing and how you're doing if not stats? Yeah. A lot of people will tell you that stats aren't very truthful. You know, stats will tell you, uh, for instance, that uh, Suarez was a much better player than what Zinedine Zidane was. Stats will tell you that. That's what the stats yeah. will say. But yeah. is that actually factual and true? I don't know. Stats will tell you that that very same Suarez was a better striker than the original Ronaldo. You know, is it true? I don't know. But the stats will tell you that. I don't know what the real. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what the stats will say. Well, the stats say something else as far as Itumil and Kuhn is concerned out at Kaiser Chiefs. This takes nothing away from whatever you might think, but it does get us asking questions about that. It does get us asking questions about, a lot of people have been thinking about, you know, Itumil and Kuna's role within Kaiser Chiefs at the moment, right? Yeah. So, the last seven games that Itumil and Kuna has played for Kaiser Chiefs, Mkonza. Yo, Andile, it, 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 it's, a, it's a tricky one in a sense that um, I'm looking at Tukun in the last three years. When we pick seven games, in the last three years, what has Kuna done in terms of playing regularly? And that's why Chiefs had to sign Akpe. Akpe was not signed to be a regular, but to be an understudy Akune. But Ukune was injured at the time, but he never got healed from that injury, which now allowed Akpe to play more games. But again, and I understand Guti, where Unse is coming from in a sense that Chiefs last season they used three goalkeepers, Andile. And a big club, you don't, you, you need to be stable in terms of the continuity and consistency. You need to have an established goalkeeper that uh, guards your goals. So if you look at the last season, reflect Gucci Chiefs defensively, they were not okay. They've considered about, if I'm not mistaken, 26 goals last season. And the Chiefs normally, they concede less than 20. So the instability on, in defense, but also Kune hasn't done well in terms of the physical, physical conditioning. And f- for the past three years, Kune hasn't done well for me. And obviously, that is why we see less uh, Tolama chances among Anu Glala. But again, hey, Chiefs success a good transformation. That is why there's always going to be a change. Yes, we, we, Peterson got injured before this match against Cape Town City. And the coach had to make a, make a call. And the call here was to bring in Ukune. Unfortunately, Chiefs lost again. But it's not linked to the Chiefs loses because of Ukune. Piso? It's, it's, it's a bit of a worrying start, Ma. I mean, seven losses since January um, yeah, of this year. He's considered 11 goals in that time. So it's... Seven games, 11 conceded goals. 11 conceded goals, Ma. Uh, and if you not look Not a at single clean sheet. Not a single clean sheet in okay. that time. Um, it's, it's, it's a very well insight. I mean, it's, it's been building for a couple of seasons now with Itumelen it, 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 Kuna. I mean, in the last four seasons, he's only played 40 games. He's kept 11 clean sheets. In 40? In 40 games. Okay. He's considered 45 goals from those games. So it's been a, a, a trend that has been building for him for the longest time. But I think... 40, so 40 games conceded 45? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And if you look at uh, the, the stat that was given for the seven games where, where he, they lost those games with Itumelen Kunenko, in the 25 games Chiefs has played this season, right, in the league... Um, 12 of those re- resulted in losses. Seven of those this, losses. What do you mean this season? This season's this only seen seven. Uh, I mean this, this year. I mean, yes, okay, yes, yeah. yes. Um, 25 of those games, there was 12 losses. Seven of those losses were to Melian Kuhn. So, T, what do you do? So, it, it's, it's <laughs> Yo, been Hana, something that has been building. Ma- so, hold on. Chiefs have played, what, 25 games this, this year? Yeah, yeah. They've lost 12 of those. Yes. And seven of those yes. are the ones where Itumelian Kuhn was starting. That's 58%, Ma'a. Mm. That's 58%. So, it's, it's been a while inside. <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, you know, the problem is that Kune casts a very big shadow. And unfortunately, that shadow even falls on him because he's a shadow of his former self. He's mm. not the Tumulain Kune of yeah. old. He's going to go down as one of the greatest goalkeepers in South African football history. Yeah. But is he that? I can't argue that. You know, he is not the Kune that we know, that we've come to love, yeah. who was Mzanzi's number one. He's not that guy. And unfortunately, his presence at the club cast a shadow on the other goalkeepers mm. because they have this weight of expectation because you're keeping Kune on the bench. But which Kune are you keeping on the bench? You're not keeping Kune of old on the bench. Mm-hmm. You're keeping current Kune on the bench. Yeah. And, you know, that, that shadow unfortunately falls over the entire goalkeeping department. So anybody who's in goal while Kune is still there, but that shadow is cast over him. And unfortunately, they can't escape it. So any <laughs> small mistake you make, it's like, oh, but this Kune, you know, it, when you look behind, it's like, oh, Kune's <laughs> on the bench. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the reality yeah. at Kaiser Chiefs now. So how good is Itumelen Kune's presence now. for the club yeah. right now? That is a major, major question. Obviously, and this is said yeah. to be his final season, and I'm pretty mm. sure that it will be. But, you know, 
how is it affecting the team right now? Because so there's, there's going to be an argument then that says, yeah. you know, it's not the goalkeeping department at Casa Chiefs that's problematic. Mm. It's possibly the defense. Hold it on that. Okay. Let's take a quick air break. Coming out of that, I'd love to know your answer on that before we move on to the next story. Yeah, I've got the guys in the studio. We're speaking about uh, the stat that uh, Opta Jab, who's going to be joining us a little bit later on, gave to us uh, in terms of uh, the goals at Kaiser Chiefs. And it's simply this. Kaiser Chiefs have lost each of their last seven league games when Idumilin Kune has started. Biso, uh, you went on to, to, to compound it. What is that stat did you have about this year? Um, they've played 25 games and lost 12 games. Um, he's been involved in seven of those games. So seven of the 12 matches uh, that Kaza Chiefs have lost to Timmy Lekun has been in goals. Yeah. What if I say to you, though, Andy, uh, Konza, I hear all of this, but how good has the Kaza Chiefs defense been in protecting their goalkeeper? It, it hasn't been, Andy. I mean, if you go back to last season, I spoke about already, they've, they've used three goalkeepers. But what is key when making a first-choice goalkeeper? You look at also the, your playing concept, because I think Ukune, we, we've, we've, we are caught into a situation where Ukune is descent on his, on his feet, so he has to start because Chiefs wants to start the ball at the back. So he playing concept... I mean, this last game, he, watching he, that distribution was amazing, but I just wonder yes. how, but, but, but how now, much of the modern game... But, needs that long ball distribution. But, but again, Lezo into Lezo and Le can't bind you because at the very same token, you need to look at all the overall performance Kakune from the agility point of view, how he comes up, how he commands. And it, this this Kune on Wednesday was a Kune that was not confident. I mean, I think for me... But those two goals of the last two matches... I don't think any keeper saves those. Yeah, no, no. I'm not even t- talking about it. But how we marshal is different. Remember, goalkeeper, I always say, it, men of the matches are not... Wi- uh, goalkeepers cannot win men of the match because that means you are not organized as a goalkeeper. Your team was not organized. So, but I'm a short. But if Upegu Kun in the past week, Captain City, I was saying to Mark now, this is not the best Captain City I've ever seen. Captain City is the only team that plays. They don't change their, st- their stripes and, and sports. And it, so, Uktinka is a confident coach. But again, how they played Kaiser Chiefs and they beat Kaiser Chiefs with the Captain City, less so Kune Jive. But I still believe that Tukune for me, if I can physical conditioning at the age of If I can I can tell you, okay, but okay, I'm not even let, 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 Let's make, uh, and I'm going to ask a direct question. Because yeah. now you're saying he still needs to stay there. He still needs to work harder. Physical condition mm. at that age is almost impossible to, to turn the... Should he still be there? I think Considering that, what Mark said as well. Yeah. The big thing with club legends is when we start accommodating club legends in the system, mm. you're always asking for trouble. When you're accommodating a player because he is a legend and he's yeah. been because there, of what he's done. business yeah. Yeah. and what he's done Loyalty. in the past, you're asking for trouble. Mm. And unfortunately, right now, we are accommodating uh, Itumilam Kune. Um, if you look at the fact that over, I mean, you can go back a, a good number of years, Kaiser Chiefs have never had a solid number one. Yeah. They never, And you can't build on that. Oh, you, you mean since Kune was? Since Kune was. Yeah. There's never been, I mean, you can go There's back never to been the time of brilliant yeah. Kuzwayo. Yeah. When Kuzwayo was challenging Kune for that number one jersey. There's never been a solid number one at Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. And that is a big problem. Because how many keepers have played more than 20, 25 games in a season? Akbay was a statistically better yeah. keeper than Kune. Yeah. Played a lot more. He yeah. got sent off. Yeah. But even then, even that shadow of Kune was still, was even still with there. him. Because every time a slight blunder, it was like, ooh, you know, then we talk about Kune. Yeah. I need so, to move from this market. Be so close it quickly. Uh, it, it, just to add on to that, Ma'a, you alluded to how good has the defense in front of him been. In the last three games that uh, Kaiser Chiefs has played with Kune and Go, there's been three different defenses. You cannot have that at a big yeah. club where consistency of your defenses, because as a goalkeeper, you're supposed to cater for the, the frailties that your defenders have. You know mm. that someone isn't good with pace, so I have to come out and, and play mm. super keeper. You know that there's a cross coming in, he's, he's not good in the air, I have to come out and get the cross. If you're changing defenders every single time with your goalkeeper, there is too many things to work on. Well, let's move on. You can carry on this conversation on social media. I'm pretty sure it will. Uh, if you want... Uh, um, a lot more to it. You can go into our Twitter page, our Facebook page. You can go to our YouTube page as well as the Metro FM website to get our uh, exact comments. So that you don't yeah. No, get the voices and put them on there. Let's move on to another one. We spoke to uh, Chairman out at Baroka. What they're doing there is brilliant. I mean, the Baroka village, mm. um, which he says to Very me strong, that it, it actually complies with PSL regulations. Mm. So if he does come back to the PSL, they'll be playing PSL games there at mm. their own village. Where mm. they train, where they eat, where they, which is brilliant. I mm. love it. Mm. But then Ukurisho says to me that he's hired Dan with one mandate. Mm. Rem- mm. Remember, 10 games already, I mean, sorry, 10 points already lost by them mm. in the games played. And he says, I've hired him to do one thing and one thing only, and that's to win the league this season. Have a listen. 
Yes, in, in, in we must win the league and we go with him in, in a DSTV Premier League next season. Is that part of the contract that you've signed with him? Yes, part of the agreement, yes. How many years have you given him to try and win? Is it this year? He must win it this year? No, no, this year. This year? Yeah. yeah. Failing which? If he's not able to get you promotion? Have you had that conversation? No, failing which is that we'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge when we reach it. But our agreement is he need to, 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 to win the league. He had to win the league. Well, we know what happens at that bridge. Many don't come back <laughs> from that yeah, bridge. <laughs> well, there it is. Yeah. He's supposed to win it. And I don't know if you guys have looked at uh, what uh, uh, that league looks like yeah. and where they sit, Barroca and Konza. Hey. He must win it this season. Yo, Andy, I mean, already Utenten's first game, Sega Jali Trone, up in this past Wednesday. But I like how Chairman of Hypes uh, is signing at Utenten's. Magati uh, is in the same league as Upito no, no Rulane. And I like that. I was like, oh, what an interesting point. But I wanted to check the context here. But he's saying Tentens Malisela doesn't change his stripes. His playing concept has never changed. The only thing needed in his playing concept are my results. Can he do it at Barroca? Does he have the quality to, to, to win the league? The question also comes in. Good. Has he promoted the side? Because such, such, such certain things, you need to know the dynamics. You need to know each journey. And the okay, Maguso, see, we're not going to win. And the uh, championship, playing good football, it's not enough. You need also the aggression. You need Zonga's pedal as well, seven. I mean, at the moment, they're sitting in 15th, Mark. Um, they've got four points. Hungry Lions, who are at number one after seven games, are 14. That's a 10 point difference that he has to overcome. Yeah. Well, Other team that hasn't been winning. I mean, he's starting with his back against the wall. And if you look at it, uh, yes, he started with a draw in his one, the one game played so far. It's going to be very difficult. Second bottom, um, you know, they've uh, minus two goal difference. And the problem for me with Coach Dan um, and what is uh, expected of him now is he has a particular way that he wants to play. Mm. We know the type of football yeah. that Dan wants to it's play. very pretty. Beautiful football. But that takes time. I mean, is that, you know, coming into the system when you haven't had a preseason, when mm. you haven't been able to implement your philosophy and your style of play, the way you want to go about your business? Does like, he have the luxury of time? And the games, I don't, uh, games are coming thick and fast. Exactly. Mm. Games are coming thick and fast already. I mean, this weekend there's another game coming up. I don't think he has the time to play the way he wants to play. And can he play another way? Can he just go scope and donor, get the results, um, smash and grab kind of thing? Because in the NFD, um, in the Mutepi Championship, that is a bit what's required. And if you're not able to do that, did they get the right man for the job then if they want results immediately? Hmm. Mr. Snaps. I think we're seeing a marriage of two interesting entities here. Uh, there's, there's Dan Dance Malisela on one side who is romanticized by South African football fans for the style of play, mm. you know, for, for the way that he has played football, for the t- type of football that he has displayed for so many years. And on the other side, we're seeing a Barroca team that in 16 years of existence has given us so much entertainment. I mean, you look at the 2011 Cup run, you look at um, 2018 when they beat Paris in the Telkom knockout, um, the facilities that they have. It's, it's such a beautiful marriage of two different things, of two different entities. Mm. But two different entities and facilities don't play football. At the end of the day, you still have to win games on the field. And then the amount of points that they're already, already are behind by in that league is a lot for to ask him to come and win the league. I mean, Dan Dance, if you look at his record from 2015, 2016, up to now, has won 36% of his games. Sure. Is it realistic then? Can he do it? Yes or no? According to the points and football <laughs> doesn't have it, therefore they will say yes, it's possible. <laughs> but I just don't think it's possible. Ma. I, I mean, if you look at last season, Baroka, by around the, tw- the 27th or 26th game, they were around 13th or 14th in the league. Hmm. They went on a three game run that took them up to ninth and it looked romantic at the end, but they had been poor for a lot of the season. <laughs> Mark, can he do it? Is it possible? Is it because I asked the the, the 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 chairman? I said, chairman, is this not setting him up for failure? Because surely you mm. give him this season to marinate, and then next season perhaps to win it. Because it, it seems like a lot to ask, and not necessarily even with Dan. Is that something that a coach should take on? I think it's an unrealistic expectation, to be honest with you, especially given the fact that he's come in when the season has already commenced. Mm. If the season at the beginning, he's had a full preseason, um, he's, yep. you know, he's established himself within the team as a coach, his philosophy, whatever he wants, um, then I think you can possibly. But to ask that of him when your club is second bottom, mm. only four points from six, uh, from six games played, I think it's an unrealistic expectation. And, um, you know, 
I, th- I don't think it's possible. Well, let's move on from it. Uh, we do still have the build-up of the match this weekend. It's a big one. It's uh, Pirates versus Sundowns in the MTNA final down in Durban. will be broadcast live on SABC1 on SABC Sport. The last story we're going to be touching on before that is what Hugo Bruce had to say. It was set down, yeah, um, when is it, on Thursday? Uh, which was yesterday. Was it yesterday? Was it the day before? Day before. Yesterday. Mm. And uh, had a great conversation with him. It's an SABC Sport exclusive whenever he does come in to give us the squad announcement. Have a listen to what he had to say about Sundowns' dominance and the PSL not giving Sundowns competition. They win every game. They didn't lose one point. When I see Chiefs and Pilots who normally has to be the biggest opponent of yeah. a team like Sundowns, yeah, it's not what we expect from those teams. So, yes, the quality of, uh, of a VSL is not increased. It stayed the same. Hmm. Same thing. Sundowns is dominating and the others are trying to follow. But they can't follow. This is not good for South African football. Hmm. And I think for Sundowns even, it's not good. Well, there it is. Hugo Bruce, uh, he's not one to, you know, cut his tongue. <laughs> I asked him about that and he said he's not going to change. Yeah. That's just who he is. Mark, mm. I'm going to start with you on this one. I mean, you heard at the top, he goes on to say the reason Sundown struggle and get out quarterfinals, semifinals of Champions League is because of weakened opponents here at home. Pirates and Chiefs in particular have to step up in order to toughen the league and toughen the competition then moving forward. Yeah. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I I have to agree with him, and that's I must say I love that about Hugo Bruce, the fact that he doesn't mince his words, he sp- he, words he speaks it like he sees it, um, and you have to agree. If you look at where Sundowns are on the log right now, uh, a full haul of points, twenty four from eight games. Second place is Golden Arrow, seventeen points. They are actually on league winning point. Uh, if if you look at it, we I've, I've I've said this before, two points per game generally wins, wins you the, the league. league. Yeah. Mm. Arrows are ahead of that because they've played eight. They got 17 points. They're on track to win the league. So is Supersport, if you want to call because Supersport, eight, point, uh, eight games played, 16 points. Yeah. Two points they're per game. Par, yeah. So they're on track to win the league. But yes, like he says, Sundowns are so far ahead of everyone else. To have a possible eight from eight is ridiculous at this point of the season. Mm. They haven't stumbled and they don't look like slipping up. And so that is the scary reality. Yeah. And yes... Does that also now make it uh, the reason why they haven't been able to get all the way in the Champions League? You have to agree with them. It makes a lot of sense. Are they getting enough competition at that level? The level that's pushing them week after week to raise the bar, to yeah. keep raising the bar? Mm. Probably not. Pisa? It's, it's the truth, Ma. It's, it's a painful truth for, for opposition fans to take, of course, but it's the truth. I mean, seven points ahead with eight games played is ridiculous. I mean, Sundowns for the last two seasons have won the league with 16 points. That's, that's unheard of. The, the, the season before that, it was 13 points. They win the league with so much ease. And it is true sure. that it affects them yeah. when it gets to the CAF uh, final stages. I mean, in, in, in their 16 years that they've qualified for, for, for the, the, the CAF competition, they've only made two finals. And that's because of the lack of competition on a week-to-week basis. You're facing sides that face tough, tough opposition all the time. And are experienced enough to know how to navigate these competitions. I mean, we saw last season, Sundowns demolished Alakli here at home. And one of the best games that we've seen from a South African team in, in that competition. But Alakli went on to win the competition. Because they mm. understood that, you know what, we might lose this game, mm. but at the end of the day, the goal is to win the competition. So it, it, it really counts against them in the latter stages of the competition that they play about four big games in the league, big games just because the other teams are also considered big teams, and then 25 or 26 training yeah. sessions. So it's, it's too easy for them. in the Kanza? League. Sorry, sorry, uh, Mark? The reality is, it's almost like Sundowns have this thing where they say, let's wrap up the league as quick as possible yeah. So, yeah. We can <laughs> so we can focus <laughs> on the Champions League. And that's Ivar. ridiculous. No, Ivar. That's ridiculous. That's and those are the realities but, but, that but, they deal with. But Andy, I think for me, Aliki, Aliki can say what Bruce has been saying. And the things that Bruce has been saying are key and important, which we shouldn't take for granted. He's calling for an aggressive improvement, especially with my teams, in particular Sundowns. Pirates, if you remember last week I said, it's important to have three clubs that are doing so well in your domestic league and it helps your national team and if you look at Paris and, and Chiefs in the, in, in the last years they've been done so well so he's calling for a competition to Sundowns because it shouldn't this be, it be easy Ganji. and my easy Ganji, it doesn't help Sundowns to improve because Sundowns last season they fell short when it comes to semi-final because of a competition hasn't been that, that solid and consistent let me throw a spanner in the works because yeah. there's a coach who just sent me a text now yeah. uh, I'm not going to say who the coach is but the coach says that's nonsense simply because 
How then on earth did a team that got relegated last season make it all the way to top four of CAF Confederation and yet you're going to tell us that we have weak teams? Because Marumo Callens, yeah. how are they a weak team that went all the way to the top yeah. four of the Confederations Cup? Mm. And Sundowns played them. They're not weak opposition then, are they, no. if they went all the way to the top four? Or am I wrong? Mm. What do you have to say to what the coach has just said, Mark? Uh, the thing is, how good are you over an extended period of time? Mm. The fact mm. that you you, mm. you you can make uh, the confed semi-final, yes. but then you get relegated in your domestic Stimic. league, mm. it doesn't balance out. So that's the thing. Um, you know, consistent competition, how good are you over an extended period of time? That's what matters. Mm. And ultimately, sundowns are not being tested enough over an extended period of time. Yeah. Um, week in, week out, how tough it... And uh, we don't want to nullify... Uh, what Sundowns have done and you know we have to be very careful in that regard because it, it is because of their endeavor and what they do week in week out yeah. they put in the work they you know when you look at how they they've built the squad that they have that's work it takes effort so you know it, it sounds like we're really making it like it's a walk in the park for them yeah. so we don't we don't want to minimize what they've done yeah but has everyone else really you know move, push the envelope to get close to sundowns i don't think they have sundowns and their processes that they go through they're so far ahead of everyone mm. else and just people are not catching up to them and that's the big problem and they're going to continue growing they're going to continue getting better because of the effort and the work that they put in no one else is doing enough to really keep the pace. But, but I got to cut and it. I know Kwanza wants to come <laughs> in, but I just don't have the time, Kwanza. I've got to cut it there. Uh, that's it. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, he's a DSTV Premiership coach. Uh, big name. Big name. <laughs> <laughs> big name. <laughs> yeah, don't take him lightly. Yeah. Uh, we've got Linda Lamoya of um, Opta Jabu that we're going to be speaking to in just a few. Um, Malcolm, can we take this break now? Okay, we're going to take the break now. Come back. We speak to Linda Lamoya, and then the panel will be speaking about uh, their player of the week as well as uh, the person that, or the team that they don't think did they best this week before we start previewing the final. Let's go now straight to Linda Lamoya. Linda Lamoya is part, part of the guys that give us the best. I mean, I'm going to be relying on them heavily for tomorrow's game in the final. It's Opta Jabu. Follow Opta Jabu. It's O-P-T-A. J-A-B-U for the best stats and then of course there's a uh, subsidiary pages to that as well the one that I use most it has to be um, Latuma Analytics go take a look at that if you want stats like what the guys in the studio have Lindelo Andile good evening uh, hey good we evening missed you last listeners. week man uh, I'm around I'm around hey let's, looking forward to this big game this weekend well talk to me what do we have for this weekend so it's Pirates versus Sundowns, we all know that, but then it is the big one. Um, Pirates are familiar with this stage, that's the first stat that we have. Mm. Um, they're appearing in the top eight final for the 18th time since 1972. Only Kaiser Chiefs have been to more finals since then. Wow, how many have Kaiser Chiefs been to? 21. 21. 21. And the opponent, Sundowns? Sundowns have been on 11 finals. They're third on the list. Oh, Sundowns only 11. That's only a huge 11. difference, huh? Yes, not their favorite tournament um, in the past and even nowadays. Okay, tell me about uh, the PSL era then. Orlando Pirates, um, what do they look like as far as the PSL era in these numbers? Yeah, so when we whittle it down just to the PSL era, Pirates are appearing in their ninth final. And in this instance, it's more than any other team. In fact, they've won more top eight in the PSL era than any other side doing so five times. Well, then that means I look at this and I think it's advantage Orlando Pirates. How does Sundowns have an upper hand? It sounds like advantage Orlando Pirates until you look at their history when they meet in actual finals in competitions. So together they've met head-to-head -head in five finals. This is all competition since 1985. And Sundowns have won four, Orlando Pirates just won. Wow. So Sundown's struggle. You can switch on Mark there. Mark wants to come in. No, but Mark, you're going to get to preview it now. So yeah, hold on. Yeah. Uh, what about Pirates? <laughs> uh, so, there's something about penalties. A match like this has the potential to go to penalties. It's a final, Andy. If it ends nil nil, it goes to penalties. 1-1. One, one. Any draw uh, in extra time goes to penalties. And Pirates certainly don't want that. Why? They've been in 12 penalty shootouts since 2015. And they've lost 10 out of 12. No. So they've been in 12, they've lost 10. They've only won two when it goes to penalties. Just two out of 12 since 2015. I'm going on air with that one tomorrow. Thank you so much, uh, Lindelo. How do we follow you? <laughs> uh, OPTA, JBU, as you said before. But as, as you said again, we'll see everyone on air tomorrow.
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Linda Lamoya, Opta, Jabu, do follow them. You'll see. Um, they're nice and uh, blue there on X. I don't know why I still, I still call it Twitter. I'm so old school. Mark, here's the yeah. opportunity. We're building up to the big final. Yeah. Get in on it then. No, no, I, I, I was just trying to make sense of, of obviously those stats. But yeah, yeah it seems like obviously uh, in terms of stats, Pirates would be the favorites. But, um, you know, when you look at the recent form, you'd have to make Sundowns the favorites. Tell me why. Give me a little bit more. I mean, just the fact that uh, Pirates, uh, ha- you know, are struggling to win games at the moment. Even their semifinal, the last leg of that semifinal, they lost 1-0 to Stellenbosch, um, got through on the mm-hmm. away goal. Um, you know, if you look at how they started the season, I mean, they, they first, uh, the quarterfinal, 5-0 thumping. Um, that they gave out uh, to Skukune and then, you know, just kind of petered out from there. Did they finish all their goals? I I don't know. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, for that fact, just based on recent form, um, you'd have to favor uh, Sundowns in this one. Piece of snaps? It's it's a bit of an interesting one. Uh, There's so many factors at play here. I mean, if you go back to the time that Pirates and Sundowns faced each other in last season's MTN8, Mm. Pirates came out of the second leg of that with a 3-0 win. But I think there's been a difference in the way that uh, Jose Rivero uh, approaches playing Sundowns since then. In that game, Pirates had 29% possession. So they they sat back, they soaked up the pressure, they hit Sundowns on the counter. I mean, you remember that Salen goal right at the end in in the 92nd minute. But in the last two games that they've played against each other, where Pirates has been at home for both of them, of course, being at home, Pirates has tried to be a little more on the front foot. And that hasn't worked well for them because one thing that Sundowns, we've seen them doing a lot of this season is the high press. They've, they've become so much more quicker or, or on the press. And that's how they, they managed to get the penalty against Orlando Pirates uh, in, in the last game. So it's, it's, it, there's a lot of factors at play. I mean, we saw Erasmus coming into it um, against Joaneng. Yes, they, they won the game 1-0. They they should have scored more but his role was very interesting in the way that he played so there's there's a lot of factors that are uh, going to be interesting to watch out Konza you have 30 seconds um, Andy I think defending champions yes Pirates in the last four matches they've lost and they've scored one in the last four matches hey, that's a call, call, call of concern Leonto. but again if we look at Sundowns for me uh, so, uh, you can't talk about consistency and continuity from Sundowns. I mean, they are unbeaten in the last 13 consecutive matches across all competitions. And the last four matches against the, against Pirates, they've won all of them convincingly. It's not even maybe a, a low block or whatever. They've won all those matches convincingly. But it's going to be interesting. My worry with Pirates, it's players don't show up it comes when it comes to big match. I mean, Usaleng U- hasn't done so well when it comes to big matches like this. U- Maswangai uh, in, the, in the last match didn't deliver. And this is a match I, we call you need a big temperament to play this kind of match because it's, all, it, it's about consistent deliverance under stress. Can they do it tomorrow? Psychological aspect will speak and then also an application is Okulumak. While well, you're on the mic, um, yeah. your sports are amplified player of the week. Player of the week, yeah, Mayo. Is on the, I think he's on, he's, on, he's on fourth goal now. He's been frustrated. I said I shine at him and you now and then it team I'm of 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 the week. I had Rosario Rosia she's on the seventeen points in seven ma- in seven matches. They only need to, to sort out their defense. Nine goals considered. What hasn't impressed you this week? What's um, not so make sure? Let me see what what uh, because Kaiser Chiefs. I'm sorry to say this, Chiefs didn't perform against not so strong kept on seat. Mark? Player of the week. Um I, I'm probably gonna give it to Brandon Theron. Okay. Uh, for the goal he scored yesterday um, when you look at how he's been playing he's been very since he's moved from Maritzburg two arrows he's been a big part of that arrows uh, set up that second on the log at the moment and he scored an absolute cracker yesterday um, I think you know moments of the week for me and what's not so make sure for you uh, it's tough <laughs> at the moment but yeah I think uh, you know the coach speaks about a, a Chiefs team we need Chiefs to be doing well um, and I think you know they, they are performing below par and it is the type of team that is important to South African football. Their performances uh, are directly related to the hype around the yeah, PSL. 100%. And so we need a Kaiser Chiefs to be doing better. That's amazing. Peace of snaps. Uh, the player of the week, my hour was a tough one between Darwin Gonzalez of Cape Town City and... Um, uh, Kanyisa Mayo, but I think I'll give it Kanyisa Mayo because two goals and uh, a goal again uh, in yesterday's game, it's 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 good for the team. You know they needed to 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 start oh, the building other day, up. Yes, yes, the other yes, day. The other day. Um, they, they needed to start building up again. And then as far as not make sure, I, I'm not sure whether to give it to the coaching staff or the psychologists at Cape Town Spurs, but they went a goal up in both their games. <laughs> 
they went a goal up in both their games and still lost the games. And that speaks to the psychology of the players. They don't trust that they can win a game when they go up yeah. again in, in, in a game. Yeah, so if you look at how many times they go up front and they yeah. give away the lead at Cape Town Spurs, we're hoping yeah. that that's something that the so, new guys so, can fix. So it says what I said to you on Monday. Sean was not a problem. 18.50. No more time for us. <laughs> we hand it over. The calls are buzzing. Look at that. You can't get in if you're calling right now. Uh, you're a little bit too late. It is 60 for your WhatsApp and your calls on 86 0 Malcolm, very quickly, uh, we're going, what's, what's going on? Okay, we're going to take a break, come back, take two voice notes and go straight to the calls. Visit betway.co.za and never miss out on the non-stop action. Get way more with Betway. It's time to stretch out and reach for the skies in Betway's latest game, Aviator. Place your bets and the plane flies higher and higher. Pick the right time to cash out and you could turn 20 Rand into a massive 3 million Rand. Only at Betway. It's a shoe. Bra, bra, bra. Visit betway.co.za to bet on every unforgettable sporting moment. Get way more with Betway. It's time to stretch out and reach for the skies in Betway's latest game, Aviator. Place your bets and the plane flies higher and higher. Pick the right time to cash out and you could turn 20 Rand into a massive 3 million Rand. Only at Betway. It's a shoe. Brr, brr, brr. T's and C's apply. Licensed and regulated by the Western Cape Gambling and Racing Board. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. For gambling counseling, call SARGF on 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp 076 675 0710. Oh, Ziakala It's back. It's bigger. It's Rende Rama time at ShopRite. For five days only, hurry and save up to 40% on homeware, small appliances, outdoor, DIY, and much more. Get some top things, my fate, like a 14 watt Osram compact fluorescent globe for just 20 rand, an essential twin spiral hot plate for only 230 rand, and a six piece zebra cookware set for just 270 rand. Don't miss out on Rende Rama for five days only. This Wednesday to Sunday, only at Shoprite. Feel safe this holiday season. Secure your home with Trellidor. Call 861 Trellidor now and get a quote within 24 hours. Our security experts are on standby at over 50 franchises across South Africa. So call today or visit Trellidor.co.za. Trellidor, the ultimate crime barrier. They don't mind sharing the field of play, but they have a disagreement on who grabs the vital three points. This is the doubleheader of the Hollywood Bears Kasafa Women's Championship. Seven-time regional champs by Nyana Bayana want to dance to victory, but Madagascar does not intend to fold their arms when the kickoff whistle blows at 12 midday. Meanwhile, Malawi and Eswatini will not allow each other a breathing moment during their 3.30 meeting. Live on SABC One. Catch both matches on Saturday, 7 October, live on SABC Sport on DTT Channel 4. Also available on SABC Plus and SABCSport.com. Hashtag, we love it here. Brought to you by SABC Sport. For the love of the game. Let's go straight to the calls. Malcolm took all our time there. Majoro is out in Soweto, wants to speak about the MTN8. Majoro. Majoro, Hello. are you there? Yes, I'm um, no, come on, man. Go straight into it. Oh, I'm going to handle it. Handle, handle. I'm going to get it. Mama, I'm going to get my money tomorrow. Hey, I've been listening to you, and uh, there's just one thing that I need to say. We came back to us about um, I, I go on tour. Yeah, I go on tour. I'm sorry because pirate, pirate, I go, I go on a tour. Why do you say that? That, that's because a lot of people have uh, an expectation of sundown because it's a bit of an And I, I honestly don't think of it. That is my opinion. I, I hear uh, it and I accept it. Thank you very much, Majora. Yeah. I appreciate it. Majora yeah, is yeah. out in Soweto. Let's go now. Uh, I can't see that to me. Sinong, I think, is in Rustenburg. Sinong. Sinong, you there? Hey, man. Uh, 
Hey, Sinong. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here, ma. Talk to me. Yeah, I would like to uh, comment and say, Hugo Bridge is telling the uh, truth, ne? nothing but the truth. He's on point uh, on, on, on those comments, because uh, in looking at the memory of Sundowns, in Sundowns you can lose more than three games and then remain in charge. You get my point? Chiefs and Paris will be saying now, but our team played well, played well, played well, but now the results for the first five years, the results are not coming out. So Sundowns, the, the, the standards are just high. If you can't win three or four games, you are out. Hmm. Simple as that. Ah. Sinon, out in Rustenburg, I appreciate it. Uh, speaking about Hugo Bruce Singh is right. Sam is in Rustenburg, wants to speak about the final. Sam. Hey, Ma, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Go straight into it. Yeah, I just want to talk about tomorrow's game. My, uh, I don't think Pirates will win tomorrow. The way Pirates is playing. Pirates, uh, but a final is a different game, game Chief. Oh, oh favor, yeah. not yet. I mean, I'm saying we Chief. Yeah, yeah that, that, that we get right. so. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, I, 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 Hey, Andy, how are you? I'm good, man. You heard what everything the guy said about Kaza Chiefs, and you want to comment on it? Yeah, yeah. My greetings to Mark Mkonza and Snap there, man. Mm. Uh, look, look, man, uh, uh, we're being a bit unfair on Chiefs because we have high expectations of the club. They, 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 they've played eight. Okay, sorry, they've scored eight. They've been scored six. That's not bad uh, goalkeeping. If you look at other teams that are on top of them, some have been scored nine. Kaiser Chiefs only considered six. And we are, we are saying they have a bad goalkeeping department. I think the only problem they have there is the defense. Kuna is the last line of defense. Whether Peterson and Kuna, they're the last line of defense. If you're facing a goalkeeper, you're goal bound. And the goalkeeper needs to just guess the right way where the ball is going to go. How? Oh, I'm, well, I'm very sure that's not how it works. But I've yeah, got but, experts here. Let me go into it. Mark wants 50, to answer 50, you. Yeah? 50 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, and delay. You are in front of me. You are about to score. You have passed every one. All the 10 players, I'm the last person. Yeah, uh, but that's not how the goals have been going in. But hold on, Maluse. Hold that thought. Let's go to Mark. Mark? I think that the big thing is, if I can say to Maluse, it wasn't about whether Chiefs have quality keepers or not. I think they have some of the best keepers in the country. The problem is that shadow that hangs over them. And that, for me, is the big thing. I think uh, Kune has well past his best. He's not the Kune of old, but he has his shadow is still hanging over the entire goalkeeping department. Yeah. I think they have, like Brandon Peterson, I rate him very highly. Bruce Vuma, he's been a part of the Bafana setup multiple times. They have some of the best goalkeepers in the country. But what is causing, uh, for me, is that shadow that Kune casts over all of them. That is a problem at Chiefs, I do believe. Maluse? But, but I think I think I think we are giving him uh, an unfair chance. But but I want to leave Chiefs because that's what I saw. Dance Malisela uh, Andile. Mm, uh, very quickly go to it. Playoffs. Let's give him playoffs. Not the not the league. Let's but give him playoffs. If he makes playoffs, then, that for me yeah. is a great achievement. If he and makes playoffs, play. that is let's an amazing playoffs. achievement. Sure. Let's say playoffs, not the not the league, uh, uh, Andile. All right, and cool. lastly, Golden Arrows, uh, 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 Andile. If you saw what Richard Bay did last year, that's what Golden Arrows is doing. They're securing their position in the league. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Andy. Let's go to Bonkosi. Bonkosi is out in Soweto. Bonkosi. Yeah, no, boy. Go sure. for it. And the Lincoln and I can access it's a pound to pound, it's a pressure of the stars. And then it can make any access, I will power pass, not taking up the pass. So it's on down the arena for the first time of the formula Monday. I never call you on Monday, I'm gonna call you on Monday. It's on down the winning the internet sharp on me. Well, of course, I appreciate it, guys. I really do appreciate your time and being here. Uh, remember, you can catch the guys on their socials, uh, but also you can go and follow uh, in what they're doing. Dr. Mnandi, building kids into tomorrow's superstars. Mark taking it from there with the CCC company, uh, the Triple C, which is Center Circle Consulting, which he is the head of here in South Africa and managing better people because that's what we need at the end of the day. And of course, Bistro Snaps. When you go to YouTube, when you go to our Instagram, that's the man that takes care of all of that. Next week, Friday, again, we do it. We reflect on the week that was and we open it up to you. Pella, pella, and so on.